Hey, forget about it. I don't know. I was doing an impression or something. <laughs> uh, <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, hey, right? Forget about wrong, it. Wrong out of the gate. Did the, the lyrics of this week's song bum you out? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, they did. They're great. They're pretty great. But here's what it sounded like to me. I'll say right. Well, first of all, let's welcome you to episode 58. <laughs> hey, 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 wait a minute. Episode 58 of Alex yeah. and Jim Analyze Billy Joel Lyrics. 58. Yes. And the song we're analyzing is Tomorrow is Today, which it isn't. But still, that's the song. Right. I feel like it's probably a metaphor. From yeah. the Cold Spring Harbor LP. That we are working our way through. So I'll probably pick. This was your pick, right? This was my pick. Well, I'll probably pick another Cold Spring Harbor one. I was thinking of it because I'm, I'm kind of enjoying doing this. I'm closing <laughs> the book on Cold Spring Harbor. Here's what occurred to me. Have you listened to uh, big ass Beatles collections where they col where they include everything those guys ever recorded? Oh, yeah. Like when you get a box set for your birthday or something. Yeah. And it's got not just let it be. It's got let it be alternate take seven <laughs> and stuff like that. And there's yeah. inevitably a version that's not good. Right. Which is why they didn't put it out in the first place because it wasn't finished. Yeah. And it's only, in, I like them, of course, because I like the Beatles and it's interesting to hear, but it's not interesting to hear musically. It's just, oh, it's neat that this exists. Right. It's a museum uh, piece. Yeah. Um, yes. I do think it's very funny that if you become as big as the Beatles and or there's a lot of authors this happens to, you get to do all your great works. And then somebody almost behind your back is like, puts out your, uh, basically your drafts folder. Right. And was like, look how shitty this was. <laughs> or they fixed it. And like, wait, I just wanted to. Yeah, look at this not remotely finished thing. He's dead now. So what we did is we got some hump to finish it. <laughs> right. So get ready for a second half that don't make a lick of sense or is just all right, I had to get to the end. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Kurt Vonnegut, the author. Sure. I read, and you know, he must have written 30 novels, all of which I read and all of which you know, obviously were published. And then they would publish like, oh, well, here's a collection of his short stories and stuff. And, you know, he's obviously stopped writing when he died. And then they were like, well, what else can we do? So I just bought this book at the local bookstore. That is a collection of his uh, graduation speeches, <laughs> which you know he didn't lean into in the yeah. same way. You're reading along and you're like, these are a little dumb. You can yeah. tell, like, he hung, was hung over on a plane. <laughs> like, oh, this will be cute. It doesn't matter what I say at this point. I'm Kurt Vonnegut. I'll just show up. Yeah. Ah, that's so funny. If you just picked up that book. You'd be like, this guy is not. A great writer. <laughs> yeah, if that's your first introduction to him, that'd be pretty funny. They <laughs> did. You should work backwards. Start yeah. with start with this the uh, University of Connecticut graduation, <laughs> like six months before he died. Yeah, where he was either collecting the paycheck or he was doing some a niceness. He was doing a niceness. Yeah, or like doing bits for Connecticut kids. <laughs> Right. <laughs> like this, this is something that plays really well. Yeah. The afternoon sun. Yeah. Behind a school. I'm reading it in my library. Right. Anyway, so this is what occurred to me when I'm listening to this damn song. I'm like, this sounds like an outtake. It sounds, I agree with you. It sounds to me like two outtakes. <laughs> it's like, yeah. There's a whole other song just plopped down in the middle of this yeah, song. The soulful <laughs> turn is not good. Yeah, it doesn't. And, it, and you're right, it didn't occur to me that way, but you're right, it just kind of feels like 
this isn't this same song. No. And he is, he does like a different voice. Yep. It is, it's like an old timey ventriloquist routine where then like, take it away, puppet. <laughs> he sings the middle in the puppet <laughs> voice. And they go back to, and I'll, I'll finish this. Do you think he was trying? So one of two things, either he, it feels just not finished. That's what it feels like. It feels published because we had a deadline or because you're a new artist and you have three hours in the studio and that's how much we're paying for or right. whatever, or possibly both. Is he trying to do a Beatles thing way too early in his career to pull it off? Because it again has a McCartney esque sound to his singing, which could be from the engineering as we've discussed. The engineering on this is something he hates and has been acknowledged as being kind of bad. Yeah. But also, two songs smashed together is a thing the Beatles did, but well. Yes. I'm sure they had janky versions that just didn't end up on vinyl. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this <laughs> this is like he's trying to do a day in the life or something. Uh-huh. Like it turns into a whole different song in the middle. And it's like, yeah, but... That was a good song. <laughs> yeah. I, I, song. I wonder why it never occurred to him as through the years as he top any every now and then when he would emulate the Beatles a little bit. I don't know why it never occurred to him that he's one guy. <laughs> yeah. Because the Beatles famously were more than one guy. It's one of the things they're known for. Right. It was it's in their nickname. Yep. <laughs> they were never the fab dude. <laughs> <laughs> and they very famously also all wrote songs. Yep. Except Ringo, who even he wrote a couple. Yeah. It took a shot. Yeah. All of them about marine life, but that's fine. <laughs> and I'm sure, uh, you know, John would write a song and Paul would write a song and they would go like, oh, let's put yours in the middle of mine. Yep. <laughs> How that goes. And they had the magic too, like um, getting better all the time is a Paul McCartney composition. John only added one part, but it elevates the song hugely. Yeah. He, uh, for those who don't know, he added can't get much worse. Right. Classic Lennon sort of sense of humor about things. <laughs> it makes the song so much better. Right. It, it, uh, that he was wrong about that, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. And at least could get better worse one day. That's true. <laughs> but then it evens out forever. Yeah. Yeah, then it's all the same for a long time. It'll spike, and then, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then it's, uh, yeah. Yeah, this one, the way Billy Joel did it, it just sounds like he, somebody accidentally hit the radio dial. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yeah. A weird soul station. Yeah. Where you're listening to, like, a John Denver ripoff. Yeah, and it does the, so he does the soul thing here in such a, a ham-fisted way, I guess, is the way I would say it, is it doesn't, it's not offensive. He's not doing a black voice or anything. It's not that. It's just not good. That's all. Not good. Is That's all we're saying. And oddly enough, the lyrics are much, so some, like some of these songs on Cold Spring Harbor, the piano is amazing and the lyric, we've talked about that, where we're like, wow, the song's actually, the, the piano's gorgeous. The lyrics are dog shit or whatever. Yeah. Here, it's kind of the opposite because the lyrics aren't bad. They're not bad, especially even in the janky part. Yeah, even there, there's there's something more there. Um, they're a bummer, as they're we've bummer. said. Yeah. But, um, yeah. but the whole song is a bummer, so that's fine. Yeah, uh, but it's you know. more interesting version of a bummer, I think. Yeah. I feel like uh, these early songs, especially, it was a time, I think, when lyrics were leaned on a little more. Mm -hmm. People the lyrics, they were printed in the liner notes. And then in later years, it was like, it's more about the tune and who cares what he's singing. 
Yeah. Um, that, I think the 80s created that. Yeah. I, th- I feel, too, this is what I thought. I thought this is an early version of a song by a guy who would eventually do scenes from an Italian restaurant. Right. And and in that song, which we've already covered, I could almost talk about that song every week, <laughs> where he nails it. Yeah. Like where that song just fucking nails it. Whatever weirdness happens just because lyrics are always going to be weird. He nails that one. That's just a, you know, a Billy Joel classic. And this is some of those ingredients not, uh, he did not nail it here. <laughs> no, sadly, no. Yeah. But that's what, that's what happens on your first album. It's funny to me listening to this album going, well, and they gave this guy a second album. <laughs> yeah. They could have not done that. And you wouldn't have blamed them at the, after this album. True. I mean, but they yeah. recognized his talent and she's got away as a beautiful song. Beautiful song. Um, everybody loves you now. Great song. Yeah. So I think they were like, you got two and that's the minimum. <laughs> yeah. Um, three would have been nice. One, you don't get another chance. But yeah. two, you can skate on two. You know, I wonder if you're almost better off this way. It happens to unfold this way because sometimes artists will, their, you know, debut album will just crush. And then the second one, because it doesn't, they're like, oh, I guess you're over. Right. And often that second album does fine. It just doesn't crush. Yeah. Whereas going the opposite direction implies to people that, Oh, I don't know if he's always going to crush, but he, he, this artist has legs. We'll invest in him. We'll 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 let him do the multiple albums because he seems to improve over time. Right, and he seems to enjoy it. He's yeah. uh, doing it because uh, he's a musician. Yeah, a rock star. True. So he'll work. Yeah. Yeah, I bet that I bet that was a big plus with him because I bet you recording recording him was probably cheaper than recording a lot of other artists because he's so self-contained. Right. Yeah, I believe that. So your outlay as a studio from just the perspective of money guys was probably like, well, yeah. however good it does, this is a small investment, really. What's his costume budget? <laughs> well, he's going to wear a shitty blazer. Right. Okay. Um yeah, we got to get clearance on a bunch of sound effects, but that's it. <laughs> I was probably like generic ones we can just use. Um, to come with the plug-in keyboard. <laughs> before we talk about the lyrics, quick side note. You and I both lived in Chicago. That's true. All and right. I, but, oh, sorry, there's I would just like to say, and without going into why I'm bringing it up, everybody knows why I'm bringing it up. <laughs> what a great city. I love that city. A city of neighborhoods. Yeah, a city of neighborhoods. Good way. Good. Yeah, good way to yeah. say it. A city of the best bars. There are no better bars in any uh, Boston bars. Go fuck yourself. Fucking Chicago bars are the best bars in the world. Amen. The best place to get drunk. The best place to get sober after you were drunk and feel safe. Yeah. Best the, place to walk around drunk. Yep. Best um, place to run into someone you never met before have a really dumb drunk conversation and know you're not getting in a fight you're just having a dumb fun little talk yep and you'll play darts and or pool yep there's like stuff to do besides drink yep but well don't bother by the way the drink is the thing but yeah you can do other stuff yeah i always like that yeah i love that city Drunk enough that I would enjoy darts right now. <laughs> yep. You know, it's, that's a, one of my biggest peeves about these New York bars. There's nothing ever to do. And also, you can't see anything. <laughs> cocktails, like, start at $17. Oh, disgusting. Yeah. Go up. Yeah. Like, well, I spent 80 bucks on drinks, and I want to play darts, and I can't. <laughs> yeah i'm not going to dave and busters now yeah 20 year old me would have been so mad because there'd have been nowhere i could have gotten drunk oh no i don't have 80 dollars oh you get drunk at home yeah 
Eight bucks. There, no, you've got seven dollars. You're good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And somebody will buy you a beer, probably. I've I've told this story. I'll do the fast version. Is Friar Tux became a regular hangout to where we became guys who were recognized by the staff. Perfect. Which is a bad sign for a, some in some ways, a wonderful sign in others. And Graham Elwood, friend, mutual friend of ours, and and myself would sometimes go. We'd be on our way to do something, and we'd say, "Let's stop into Friar Tucks for a beer," is what we would say. Uh-huh. Sure. But they knew us at that bar, and inevitably, shots would come over. We had not ordered shots, yep. but they liked us, and shots showed up, and we both certainly had the philosophy then. And I still have this philosophy, which is, "Oh, I didn't pay for this. This is great." Right. So I'm drinking this for sure. And once you've had a beer and a shot, well, there's no way you're not getting another beer. Oh, you gotta. (laughs) And it was over and over and over again that was like, let's go in for one beer and left just completely twisted and destroyed. (laughs) Yep. I have such fond memories of that. (laughs) And also some of those fond memories have a lot of holes in them. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Fond partial memories. Fond partial memories of things that I did. And who knows, somebody may still be looking for the guy who broke this window. I don't know. Yeah. Yep. Great, great city. And I'm sorry for what happened. It was a lovely, lovely city. Yeah. Um, and I still have friends there. I have a friend there who's in a 12-step program. She doesn't drink anymore. And I often say, you're in the wrong city, lady. But that's fine. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I, Chicago, as far as I'm concerned, is a place to be drunk. I yeah. know there's other stuff to do, but my favorite memories are drunk ones there. <laughs> yeah, I can't argue with that. Yeah, my favorite members, memories of L.A. are sober. You know. <laughs> Great place to be sober. Yeah, L.A., you should probably be sober. Because, man, if you're drunk there, you're you're going down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's... Uh... It's a drain. Yeah. Waiting yeah. for you to get too close. Yeah, the city will go, oh, you're you're a drunk already? Let's bring you down the rest of the way. Yeah. Whereas Chicago will allow you to get older and older as just a filthy drunk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's talk about this song you picked. Like I said, the music is okay. I don't, I don't hate the music. It just doesn't feel finished to me. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it wouldn't be surprising at all if it wasn't finished. Yeah. I don't feel like, you know, it's your first album. I don't think you get to say much. Yeah. But it could say to you, like, you need two more songs and we'll record them tomorrow. Yes. But this happens. is 1971. So it's old. <laughs> it's old. Uh, why don't you go ahead and start us off since you picked the song? All right. I'll do like two of these little stanzas, I guess. That sounds good. I've been living for the moment, but I just can't have my way. And I'm afraid to go to sleep because tomorrow is today. I love that lyric. That ain't bad. I love it. I love immediately that I understand... He, there's some impending doom. There's a thing this character or Billy Joel himself with the bad mustache uh-huh. has to face. And and I can relate so much to the feeling of like, Ugh, man, when I get up tomorrow, I have to do this. Yeah. What? what? I mean, I think now we should say what does tomorrow is today mean and does it mean the same thing every time he says it yeah because in this case it seems to mean (laughs) um i'm afraid to go to sleep because uh tomorrow is going to be the same as today was going to be me living in the moment and not having my way it's almost like there's no point in going to sleep because you're not really putting a separation between two different days. Yeah. Just like every day is the same. What, it, you know, you know, I the f- those days when you like, didn't want to go to sleep. Um, I certainly had those 
years in Chicago, as fun as it was, I was also dead broke and being chased by student loan guys. Yeah. They have a law where they can't call you after 9 p.m. So I would get mean phone calls all day long until nine o'clock. And then <laughs> I like, all right, I have a little piece <laughs> and I wouldn't want to go to sleep because I knew as soon as I woke up, their phone calls are coming back. Yup. It oh. reminded me of that feeling. Of like, I'm just going to stay up as late as I can. Uh, so you like, you didn't want to go to sleep and then you didn't want to wake up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I I get that, and I get the the heaviness of impending doom. I feel that too. It's like it's not even to me. I there just is a sense of like, not only is it going to be the same, but it's going to be a little worse the same, <laughs> right? And there's that heaviness of it too, which is that tomorrow's not. We're not viewing tomorrow as a fresh start or anything can happen. It's more like yeah, anything can happen. Right. <laughs> and even if it is the same, it's one day later, which automatically makes it worse. Yep. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Man. Yeah. I I I also feel I don't know, I right away feel that I'm I can't have my way I, I maybe I'm projecting because I know how much he writes about ladies. <laughs> and I right. kind of feel there's I, I think there's a just sorrowful thought about, you know, unrequited love, but I wonder if I'm projecting just knowing Billy Joel. Yeah. But it feels like it's there because the, the line, I just can't have my way. It, it could mean a lot of things, but I just generally think that when a fellow thinks he can't have his way, it's with, uh, with a love or a girl or something like that. Yeah. Or, you know, I always think with a musician, it might just be career troubles as well. True. Very true. Um, if so, he should look forward to tomorrow in 1971, but he doesn't know that because it's just going to keep getting a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. You want to forge ahead? Oh, I thought you were going to do the second one, too. Oh, or do, okay. you, do you want to? We could do it that way, too. I kind of like doing it the other way. Okay, I'll read it. <laughs> okay. If all right. Works. People tell me life is sweeter, but I don't hear what they say. Nothing comes to change my life, so tomorrow is today. Um, I don't necessarily love the line, people tell me life is sweeter, because I don't know what these people are telling him life is sweeter than. <laughs> right. I, I think it's a problematic phrase just from a writing standpoint. Yeah. Sweeter than, because life isn't sweeter than anything. Life is sweeter than it was, is a thing you'd say. Right. Life gets sweeter all the time. That's um, a life was sweeter than, you could say all of that. Today, life is the sweetest it's ever been because you're in my life or whatever. But in this t case, I don't know what life is sweeter than. Cola? Uh yeah, people tell me life gets sweeter would be would be much more clear. Yeah, and that must be what he means because there's no hidden meaning in that. That's just poorly phrased. That's all. Right. But people tell me life is sweet. That would be the line. But I don't hear what they say. Nothing comes to change my life, so tomorrow is today. And that really hardens your initial reading of it as to being, yeah, it's... Man, here we go again. It's the same old stupid crap. Whatever the stupid crap is, the main thing is the monotony is killing you. Right. I like that. I mean, I don't like it when it happens, and it sure has, but I like the sentiment. I think it's well expressed, uh, minus the weirdness of tell me life is sweeter. Yeah. Nothing well, comes. I don't love nothing comes to change my life. <laughs> All spoiled. Yeah, it does. Yeah, there's you're kind of a brat because you've got to change it yourself. But I like it as far as a character. You know what I mean? I, I like the clarity of it. Yeah. 
I may not think that the guy who's waiting for someone to change his life is being wise, but as far but I agree that that guy's being kind of a uh, selfish, entitled idiot because you're not owed that. As we were talking before, we went to air about some mutual friends, but you're not owed. Ooh. You're not owed contentment. Contentment is something that you will either get or not, but it's up to you to find it. Yeah. And the pursuit is half of the contentment. Indeed. <laughs> I, I, I don't talk about our founding fathers very often because why would it come up? But I've always thought the right to pursue happiness was perfectly phrased. Yes. I always like that when I think about it and I go, yeah, they got it because you do not have the right to happiness. No. No one can give you that. But you're allowed to try. Yeah, the field is open. Take your best shot. Yeah. That's what you're allowed. And we don't can... try into the government. Yeah. If, uh, nobody liked your album. <laughs> <laughs> Although I would like to see that. <laughs> Mr. Joel, why are you appearing before this committee today? He's got his little papers. <laughs> <laughs> shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Well, I worked really hard on Tomorrow Is Today. They sounded like two different songs. <laughs> I can't believe they passed that bill. I guess we like it now. <laughs> well, I guess play it again. Yeah. Can, can I wish they... Floyd had gone to Congress. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's, it's you now, my friend. I don't care to know the hour because it's passing anyway. I don't have to see tomorrow because I saw it yesterday. I like that line. That's almost Beatlesy. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's clever. It up tempo, up tempo, and a little more chipper. It would sound like the Beatles. Uh huh. Uh, but this is pretty mopey. I do like the. Uh, I don't. You know, we know that sensation too, where we were when you're super broke or unemployed, no prospects. You don't really care what time it is yeah in relation to what i'm not yeah. in bed and i don't have to get up no one's coming over it doesn't matter if it's 7 30 or 8. yeah uh, i have the opposite problem these days where i'm like you know i'll say things like jesus christ is it 6 <laughs> 16. uh speaking of chicago we another mutual friend uh, different gentleman I vividly remember one day when he did some serious day drinking and he wasn't an alcoholic and he wasn't a day drinker and we were all taken aback um, by it because it was just weird. And then now as time passed, I was like, yeah, but why not have a day when you did some day drinking as long as that's not your thing. But that was he got to one of those days when it didn't matter what time it was. <laughs> yeah. His girl, he had a girl he loved very much. They're married now and they have lovely kids. But at the time, that wasn't the case. They were still working through their relationship and she wasn't around and she was actively not around. It was that situation. <laughs> Aggressively not present. Yeah, not, oh, I have something else to do, but now whether I have something to do or not, it ain't gonna be with you. It was that kind of a day. Gotcha. So why not have a couple fucking drinks at fucking one <laughs> and that's i don't know the hour because it's passing anyway my god yeah i think i i think everything about this one particular set of lyrics is almost perfect yeah that's like you nailed it there this song is very scattershot yeah like, keep this i would lose the last one yep um do some rewrites but yeah it does seem like a good songwriter who ran out of time or a bad songwriter who got lucky here and there. Yeah. And as we go into the next verse, you see a kind of an immediate misstep again, because the next lyric begins with, so I listen for an answer. Well, <laughs> no, you don't, because you've told us you don't. Yeah. You've been very much saying you are not trying anything. Um, like if it was, okay, I'll listen for an answer, begrudgingly, right. something like that. 
And, and you know what? You're right. Because what I said about how this feels unfinished, yeah, the music's unfinished and there's opportunities for rewrites here. <laughs> yeah. And I'm it looking does, for a thing here. Better. It yeah. It doesn't even need to be major ones. It's not like the other songs where we're like, um, have somebody else sing in French. <laughs> <laughs> but it's... Yeah. Yeah, I would, by the way, this song, if it had a middle part that was in French, might fix it. <laughs> Actually, probably would. Yeah. yeah, maybe they should switch out the parts. Yeah. Put another song. <laughs> yeah, since you're doing that anyway, since we've established you're cramming one song into another. At least you would be looking for an answer. So I listen for an answer, but the feeling seems to stay. And what's the use of always dreaming if tomorrow is today. Oh, well, well <laughs> go ahead. I was going to say, if tomorrow is today, then uh, that's the use of always dreaming. That's also the direct result of always dreaming. Yeah. Never uh, typing. <laughs> true. <laughs> Very true. The days will bleed into each other because you didn't try. Um, you are an, an artist. I am an artist. We have had months and months where we did uh, nothing but dream. Yeah. And um, yeah, the end result is every day is the same. Yeah. And you don't sit down and write or make some calls or whatever you need to do to get your art going. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, man, nothing really happens to me. Yeah, that's not how it works. Yeah, that you're you if you don't leave the futon. Yeah, there's you know the the old go back into classic Hollywood of the person who was at the um drugstore and got discovered at the drugstore, like the famous actress. I don't remember who it was, but there's some gorgeous actress who is her story was she got discovered at a drugstore, right? Right. I don't uh, remember. There, Grace I, it might have been Grace Kelly, because I think if you saw her anywhere, yeah, you'd probably go, hey, there's something going on here. <laughs> uh, but there are no stories of, you know, he was just hanging out on his futon and <laughs> a big Hollywood agent walked through his living room. Yeah. And where you got something, kid. Oh, hold on. Wake up. You got <laughs> something, kid. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so yes, this guy's mistaken, but it, but it's still not a bad lyric other than, so I listen for an answer just cause I think that's disingenuous. <laughs> right. I mean, unless we're painting the picture of a character who's disingenuous and if that was the case, well, you haven't finished the song. I have no way of knowing. Yeah. I don't trust his skill set enough to think he's doing that. No, and you couldn't know it from the song. You'd be going, well, maybe that's what he meant, and that is a fool's errand if there ever was one. Maybe he meant this, maybe, but he didn't, you know, it's like looking at a painting and going, maybe he meant for that guy to be wearing a hat. He's not wearing a hat, but maybe he meant for him to, well. <laughs> we spend a lot of time in creative writing classes doing that with authors. Yeah. Especially poets. I think what he was trying to do here was talk about the duality of man and I'm like i don't know oh it's uh maybe think that much about what they're doing so yeah. maybe maybe it just sounded nice to him yeah i think yeah i think mostly yeah absolutely i mean i hated analyzing poems certainly wasn't writing this so a bunch of 19 year old pricks could pick it apart <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> I always liked reading poetry. I always agree. I agree with you. I always found the analyzing it sort of foolish. Yeah. Especially if you were in like, there was no, you never got to the answer. Yeah. You know, like, well, let's call up Robert Frost and see. Yeah. That indeed was religious imagery. Yeah. Like, well, we'll never know, but uh, good for us. For yeah. Yeah, you have to try very hard when you're analyzing art to just stick what's in the art. Like my least favorite movie review, and then this is movie reviews of are garbage now, unfortunately, just because everyone can do it. <laughs> right. Um, so many movie reviews are they're actually telling you the movie they wished had been made. Yeah. 
And that's not a useful review. Not a useful review. And they almost are always suggesting a worse movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wanted this to happen. Oh, and that would stink. Yeah, this, yeah. If the movie's the movie we saw is bad, your idea is worse. Yeah. And nine times out of ten, those movie reviewers just have an issue with ladies. <laughs> well, this is what should have happened. This lady shouldn't have been the hero. It should have been this guy. Okay. Okay, that's fun too. That movie exists. So fresh. Oh, yeah. That movie <laughs> exists over and over again. Yeah. What's the use of movie. always? So I think, was that mine or yours? I don't remember. <laughs> I think that was you. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> Still, I'm waiting for the morning, but it feels so far away. And you don't need the love I'm giving. So tomorrow is today. A new character. Yeah. He's been moping along for five verses. <laughs> And uh, turns out he's singing to uh, somebody who doesn't want his love. Yeah. By the way, high quality love. <laughs> yep, the best love. This uh, guy who can't get out of bed. Wow, I can't understand why you don't. <laughs> you don't need. Also, you don't need the love I'm getting. I also don't want. Don't want. Yeah. I think it's happening to you. Yeah. You can characterize it as need if you'd like i guess need almost seems inadvertently very aware because yeah man you don't need that kind of love is probably true and that right. may not be what our what our lead character means but it's very true right you don't need this kind of love the kind of love of a jackhole sitting on his futon lamenting nothing happening and doing nothing about it right who needs that? Yeah. Like uh, the old joke about the homeless guy with the dog, right? Right. The dog is thinking, I can do this without you. Right. <laughs> Living on the street and eating scraps. Yeah. And what, you know, what, what's in it for me? Yeah, absolutely. That's, Lord, that's, that's not a bad, it's not a bad lyric in the sense that it's a bummer because the song's supposed to be a bummer. It is, a, it is indeed a bummer. Uh, it's not, it's not, it's weird too, because you say to introduce the character now, I, I, in the very beginning, I'm like, I think this is about a lady and yeah, it's about a lady. Yeah. But I only knew that because it's Billy Joel and it's always about a lady. It's either about a lady or the lady is like the, the fifth thing he wants to complain about. Yeah. I'm going to text. I'm different. gonna text my wife and let her know that we're on a podcast and then she will feel bad. There we go. I think she will. Nah, probably not. <laughs> I don't think she should. No. Well, she'll probably say, You're always on a podcast. Tomorrow is today. <laughs> now, here is where that wacky turn happens. Yes. So if you haven't listened to the song, Bruno Mars do it listen to this song because you know music and pay close attention because you'll think another song started yeah and it's just kind of messy the way he gets into it yeah you now we can tell that it's written separately it's a different song because all of a sudden this guy starts doing a bunch of stuff yeah and it's a you know what this feels like to me because I've had this happen. I bet you've had this happen too. You're working on a script. Like you have this idea for a screenplay or a short story. And you're humming along and you've written, you know, say three or four scenes in act one. And you realize suddenly, ah, shit, nothing's happening. I've made nothing happen. And right. so then you pop in, something happens. Right. But in the most jarring way that wasn't intentionally jarring, it was just jarring. Yes. Yeah. Suddenly there's suddenly there's stakes, but unearned stakes, unearned right. motivation and unearned romance and the and it just makes what was just dull before now a hot mess that couldn't possibly be enjoyable. Right. And that's 
you can't save it now yeah now it's just jacked up and this absolutely is because it doesn't belong here oh my i'm going to the river I'm gonna t uh, by the way i did think of a way to fix it and i'll tell you after i read it <laughs> oh my i'm going to the river gonna take a ride and the lord will deliver me make my bed i'm gonna lie in it if you don't come i'm sure gonna die in it <laughs> <laughs> too late too much given wow it is such a what i mean <laughs> the beginning part is hopeful if you just read it gonna take a ride and the lord will deliver me but then it just takes this just pitiful self-indulgent pity party <laughs> Yeah, it's a real, this Make, is like a guy who was just sad and bummed out and then got mad. Yep. Now. About all the same things. Yep. Now, let me fix it. And I think this is the real fix. Uh -huh. And and we do a meatloaf thing here. And this is not a meatloaf style song, but this we do a meatloaf thing here. So still I'm waiting for the morning and it feels so far away and you don't need the love I'm giving. So tomorrow's the day. Oh my, I'm going to the river. Going to take a ride and the Lord will deliver me is sung by a soulful woman. Oh, she pops in That's the woman he's talking about. Okay. Oh my, I'm going to the river. Going to take a ride and the Lord will deliver me. And he says, hot heavy rock voice in this one like he rocks on this one make my bed i'm gonna lie in it if you don't come i'm sure gonna die in it and she says too late too much giving ah. for real that's a fix <laughs> that's a real good fix now here's what else you need okay if you're paying attention bruno mars when you cover this <laughs> And you don't need the love I'm giving. So tomorrow's a t today. You need a pretty sizable, f big, I don't know if it's an orchestra, but this, you need a musical break right there. Yeah. You need to give us a, just a break from the lyrics. Get us there. And that drive it to, and then she, and she comes in. Oh my, I'm going to the river. Gonna take a ride and the Lord will deliver me. Right? Doesn't that move you? <laughs> the theory does. <laughs> the theory. Oh my God. And then you need another musical break after too late, too much giving so that we can get back where we were. Right. A true bridge. I Man, I have fixed the fuck out of this. God damn, Bruno Mars, you are lucky to have Jim Mars Bruce. <laughs> Man, I, can, I cannot wait to hear this version on the radio. What do you think? Six weeks to cut it together? Yeah. Yeah, easy because the hard part I've done. Right. Now Bruno, you just got a studio. Bruno's got a studio in his house. Yeah. Um,. My other thing, and I might not be right about this, but I think this is probably a new arrangement where it's a little up-tempo instead. The whole thing? Yeah, because then it's one of those kinds of songs that are sad songs in the lyrics, but up-tempo in the music. Right. And I think, I think we got us a hit. And how, well, if that well, worked, Billy Joel would be the most yeah. surprised person in the world that this charted. <laughs> And the angriest. <laughs> like, oh, did you hear that new Bruno Mars Lizzo song? <laughs> <laughs> Lizzo, yes! That would be great. Oh, you, you finished it because Lizzo, that's, she's the right person. The right person. There may be one lyric to write just so that she can have a little kind of a rap lyric because I like it when she does that. Sure. But she doesn't have to because she's guesting on this anyway. It's Bruno's album. You got six weeks, Bruno. It's six weeks from today. I'm yeah. going, going to the radio shack. I'm going to buy a radio. <laughs> so I can listen to this uh, on the morning morning zoo. <laughs> <laughs> the morning zoo crew is going to take me to work with this. Ah, kids who don't even know the joy of a morning zoo crew. Sad. Yeah.
<laughs> Your Spotify. That's why there's all the violence in the world. Not enough zoo crews cutting up in the morning. It comes up in a lot of manifestos. <laughs> I was worried about a zoo crew, man. <laughs> oh, I would have been fine if there were more fart noises and fake traffic sounds. I can't get to work with no air horns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where are you? I've seen a lot of life and I'm damn sick of living it. Yeah. I keep hoping that you will pass my way. And someday, if your dreams are leaving you, I'll still believe in you. Gross. Yeah, that's awful. Leaving you, believing you. I get it, but come on. Yeah, that's real bad. Also, who cares if you believe it? <laughs> yeah. Now, this oh, is a sick... Boy, still believes in you. That's yeah. great. This is, a, this is a manifestation of... This is a guy trying to manifest a sick relationship. Yes. Because what he wants is, hey, when, maybe you'll be hopeless too. Right. And then I nope. can... I got gotcha. you. Yeah. And, and the, all he really has is a like a cute barista that he likes. <laughs> he doesn't know about him. Oh, for sure. God, that's fucking true. She's got a she's got a tattoo, and it's adorable. But it's not a lot of tattoos, so he's not intimidated. Right. And she's well. I'm clearly describing a girl I've seen. Anyway, <laughs> but I always know nothing's gonna happen, and I don't try. I don't write songs about it. Yeah. Oh nope. Lord, I've seen. Wow, my your third coffee of the day. <laughs> Leave it at that. Man, my. Uh... <laughs> though I'm living and I'm singing, and Wait, although my. I just get one. Oh, did I? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's how. That's how tired I am of it. No, um. I've seen a lot of life and I'm damn sick of... No, I didn't skip one, did I? I don't care to know the hour because it's passing anyway. Oh, it's not on here. Okay. Oh, I guess I don't care to know the hour because it's passing anywhere. Anyway, I don't have to see tomorrow because I saw it yesterday. Is that the lyric? The one. Okay, for some reason on BillyJoel.com, they didn't bother putting it there. Oh. Huh. And I guess it's because... Well, I don't know because they're not doing their job. I feel like this song makes everybody give up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, hey, talk to our audience for one second. All right. I'll be right back, and then we'll do the last lyric. Be ready, everybody. All right. You know, it occurred to me that this song could just as easily be called Today is Tomorrow. I'm not sure, <clears throat> excuse me, if that has the same effect because you're putting a lot of pressure on tomorrow under those circumstances. I think the problem is that you're anticipating a tomorrow that's going to be like today. You're not complaining about a today that's going to be like tomorrow, a tomorrow you have not experienced yet. You have nothing to go on. Happily, yesterday is completely left out of the equation. Um, and for a guy who is uh, trying to pursue a career as a guy who sounds like the Beatles or wants to be like a Beatle, is probably wise to not bring yesterday into the equation because it feels like you on the nose. In fact, it probably, this song may have very well come into being when he was listening to the song yesterday and was like, oh man, I would love to get my hands on that real estate, but it's such a famous song and it's the title of a very famous Beatles song. I will probably... How'd it go? I'm talking about uh, Yesterday and how I would... My imagination is that Billy Joel heard the song Yesterday and thought, oh man, I'm going to do a song about some days. <laughs> That's pretty good. What's left? <laughs> uh, day and tomorrow. <laughs> something with that. That's pretty good. Now, to tell you where I went, uh, my dog is so well behaved and she let me know she had to go potty. And if I don't let her go potty, then she goes potty inside. And that's my fault if she does that. 
Ah, just made that clear. That is never her fault. <laughs> All right. Um, do you want to do the last one then? Because I guess I did the, the chorus again. So that'd be you. Though I'm living and I'm singing, and although my hands still play, soon enough it will all be over, because tomorrow is today. I like that. I like it, but wow. Yeah, I like it because of wow, because it's a bummer as, as hell. Such a bummer. Yeah. I'm living, I'm singing, and although my hands still play, still. By the way, you're fucking 22 at this point. Yeah. Relax. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. eternal old man. This last lyric borders on suicide note. Yeah. I mean, it is the central feeling of suicide. It's like, yeah, I, what the things I have, I know about. They are yeah. not important to me because I'm focused on the end yeah that's all i can think about is the end yeah absolutely and it's especially cruel and jarring that he's singing and playing music like yeah ostensibly a very joyful thing no just thinking about how it's all gonna be over someday that in and of itself by the way is kind of a good message to get not necessarily to feel that way but to it's yeah. good for people to know that it doesn't matter what you're doing, that sadness can hit us all. That's a useful thing to know. I think, yeah, and to know that it doesn't matter isn't bad news. It's just news. Yeah. Um, there's a, a lyric in a Loudon Wainwright song that hit me in a similar way. Uh, which is, I gotta remember it. Anything can happen when there's nothing you can do. Oh, what a good lyric. That's great. Yeah. Not bad news, not good news, just true. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's, there's nothing you can do. So it's a very funny thing about this song because the song is not great. But if you break it down the way we have, there's a lot in it that's worthwhile. Yeah. And that's interesting. Well, first, if it's a testament to the fact that we are, in fact, talking about a very good artist, Billy Joel. He's a great artist. And then it is also a testament to the fact that every artist is plagued by laziness, deadlines, and sometimes neither just not knowing a rewrite was necessary right um yeah just uh ineptitude yeah or, i don't even want to say he was inept he was just not finished yeah yeah as a person which as, as an, an artist yeah a greenhorn indeed say and probably and you know like all good artists in the beginning suffer from not having enough control because there's a studio guy and then much later they suffer from having too much control yes and it's every damn artist goes through that like mel brooks is one of was one of my first examples of that that i think mel brooks was his absolute most brilliant in the beginning because he didn't necessarily have that much money or success and he wanted those things. <laughs> right. And he worked very hard to get it. Yep. And then, of course, he hits sort of prime. But then there's going to be stuff later on that, like, life sucks. You remember that movie? Yeah, vaguely, yeah. It's no good. It's no it's good. And the problem with that movie is it's what a rich old man thinks poverty is like yeah yeah that's why i like it when artists are like well i'm just gonna write about what's happening to me now and then if you look at their catalog you know i'm reminded of the song uh modern woman it's like just it's about billy joel's life as it was yeah i married to a supermodel yeah <laughs> 
people think she, you know, she does, she wines and dines with Argentines and Kuwaitis. <laughs> uh, but, you know, uh, she's cool, too. Yeah. She's not pretending to be poor or bragging about being rich. It's just like, look, then I, I will sing about the things I do now, which is sing in front of thousands of people. Yeah. Um, I get married a lot. <laughs> And uh, I'm a fat old dude. Yeah, yeah, fat, happy old dude. Well, happy. It was happy-ish. Happy-ish and less fat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good. it's. I'm charmed by the fact that as much as it's a problematic, I still don't hate it. Right. I still don't think that the song is worthless. I just think, I very much think it's not done, and I I look forward to how, what we gave him what six weeks to finish. Six weeks. Yeah. It, here's the thing. There are other songs on that album that are equally not good that I would say are not worth finishing. <laughs> I think this is worth finishing. Yeah. And uh, cleaning up and perfecting. Yeah. There's something there. There's a lot of songs where it's like, oh, sorry, there's nothing there. Sorry, Fall Under the Rain. There's nothing there. Yeah. <laughs> this one, I'm like, oh, you could you can finesse this into place. Yeah, you really could. You really could make a version of it that's just better. That's and not and again, I don't even think it takes much. You get the girl to sing the part, you do the two musical bridges. Yeah. A few and, lyrical cleanups. Yeah. Yeah. And you're kind of done. That is a that is a damn good song. Maybe like yeah. an airplane sound effect. <laughs> <laughs> yep. or a river. you could have the sound of a river yeah early mention of a river and then oh and now that's interesting i know that ain't on purpose but i wonder how many songs that mention rivers are between his first and last oh that'd be a good trivia question if i ever had the energy to research it yeah hey you know what though i got a trivia question for you you're the official trivia question i just um i just found this interesting so um cold spring harbor of course what's the big hit off of this would it be she's got away i would say so uh where did he perform this on tv she's got away mm -hmm. oh, no. no i would hope it'd be the ed sullivan show <laughs> it's a good guess um, probably Ed Sullivan was long gone by then. Yeah, probably. Sunny and Cher? Uh, SNL. Oh, SNL. No yeah. Kidding. Isn't that cool? Uh, if I'm remembering what the article said, it was like 1981. So it was years after it would have been on an album. I feel like, yes. It probably was when Songs in the Attic came out. And it was probably his, the second song he did that night. He did whatever the big song was probably. And then he did the She's Got Away. I think Jodie Foster hosted that episode. Really? I think it was Jodie Foster, Billy Joel. How are you remembering this? That's amazing. Uh, I'm not remembering it. I, I knew that he was, he musical guested very early on. And she famously was the youngest host in history at that point. Okay. Sort of a significant episode that way, I guess. Yeah. I also could be wrong. <laughs> but it doesn't matter because we're all going to die. <laughs> that's true. And tomorrow is today. Oh, my all right. God. That's... All right. You see what I got here, though, right? Oh. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. I like this picture, by the way. It's a cool picture. It looks like a construction site. Yeah, I think it's a kind of a construction it's sort of building a canal or something. Yeah, I don't know if they're doing that or not. If I didn't ask. If, if it were naturally occurring, it would be a valley. Yeah. Valley of hopes from river of dreams. <laughs> <laughs> but as it is, it's uh, it's kind of a ditch. Uh huh. Big ditch. Now. What would you think if you took a wrong turn and you drove here? Oh man, I'm lost. Yeah. And what would you think of the route you were on? How would you describe the route you were on? 
faulty. Well, true. But right. where where have you arrived? I've arrived at a dead end. Absolutely. Another way to describe that part of the of the <laughs> I'm going nowhere. Well, literally. What literally is this? What part of the road is this? This is the end of the road, bud. That's right. This is the end of the road. That is the end of the road. The road for a good old Captain Jack. <laughs> <laughs> the end of the road. Oh. I feel like tell me if this is true. You're into a later work. No. Oh? Oh no. Very early work. Oh no, I've lost the end of the road. Now remember what I did last week. Last week, uh, yeah, you did the last week song. And, and so last week, remember last week I did a Cold Spring Harbor song. A Cold Spring Harbor and the end of the road. It's not stopping Nevada. That's on piano, man. <laughs> <laughs> end of the road. Yeah. You know, what's funny is I remember last week's clue and therefore the answer which was the falling of the rain. Yeah. You know, you know what you should do when you reach the end of the road, though. What, was, what should I do? You should turn around. Well, that's true. <laughs> Is that, was that it? No. <laughs> oh, that was uh. It's, uh, one more guess and I'll just tell you. We'll, t we'll pull the band. <laughs> um, if I got to the end of the road like this and I was in the car, let's say I'm driving, and uh, my wife, Judy, was giving me directions, and uh, she led me here, I would go, oh, why, Judy, why? <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> well, if you get to the end of the road, you might as well. You've got to begin again. Ah, oh, shit. Well, so here I am at the end of the road. Where do I go from here? First lyric. Huh. Cold Spring Harbor. First lyric on the album? Of the song. Oh, OK. Of uh, Got to Begin Again. Son of a bitch. I don't think we've done that song, right? Uh, that is right. So let's do it next week. Got to begin again. I got to begin again. Yeah, that was a, the theme right for me was, I was like, ah, I'm doing another Cold Spring Harbor one. Yeah. And then I looked at the lyrics to She's Got Away, and it's virtually nothing that's real easy to get a picture for. <laughs> it's hard to draw a picture. Like, look up. What's a picture of a way about her? <laughs> <laughs> I will. Uh, I will continue the theme with my trivia question. All right. Here's a song that was written for Cold Spring Harbor, the album, not included on it. Was still recorded much later and included on a different album. Do you know the album and/or the song? Wow. That's a good question. Uh, Vienna? No. Hmm. It's a, the last song on the album it appears on. And that hmm. is the right album. Right? Hmm. Yes. Wow. Okay. Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's on The Stranger. It's the last song on The Stranger. Everybody has a dream. Oh, nice. Okay. And it was supposed to be on this album. Yeah, it was written for this album. Okay. Left off. Even now, I wonder, because... Pretty and very huh? good. And I bet you he worked on it some more before it got recorded, so it was probably better for the song anyway. That's probably true. Or like his voice caught up to it. Yeah. And Maybe it's couldn't sing it very well yet yeah i wonder i wonder if they recorded it and didn't use it or if it or do you know that did they record it and they didn't use it i think they recorded it and didn't use it but i don't think that's the recording that appears on the stranger okay they recorded, but i don't know for sure but to my theme today of me not quite knowing <laughs> yeah uh, that was a theme i know so well or do i I don't know. Do you know that you're wearing the same shirt from uh, last week's podcast? Uh, I don't. I did not know that, but it's been washed. 
Oh no, I, I, believe me, I don't doubt it for a second. <laughs> Look great. Thank you. Yeah, I finally did proper laundry. So here's what I do now that I have a my own washer. <laughs> I'll do the wash and then mm -hmm. I'll forget to put it in the dryer. Right. And I'll finally put it in the dryer and then I'll put it in the hamper and I'm like, well, I'm not motivated anymore. So I'll sit in the hamper and the cats will sleep on my clothes. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then uh, then it goes in the la in the washer again. Yeah. It's yep. just some, yeah. Really not even your clothes anymore. No. Um, what I've done, which I hope will solve the problem a little bit, is I've taken clothes that I know that I don't care for as much anymore, mm -hmm. and I've put them in the hamper and set them where the cat likes to sleep. Because <laughs> I like the cat. I, I want the cat to be happy. Yeah. Why shouldn't the cat have some fun? What We're the hell? Yeah. Arranging our whole lives around this cat. Cats are awesome. They're funny little creatures. Oh, what did I write? Okay, got to begin again. I better write this down or I'm going to not know that's what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> so that is your pick for next week. Yeah, that is going to be episode 59. 59. Oh my God, we're almost there. Well, almost, we're almost there. Almost hitting 60. My goodness. How many songs are there? 118 or 119, I think. No idea. It means we are past the halfway point. Yeah. It means eventually we're going to have to bite the bullet and wonder what he meant in not starting the fire. And <laughs> uh, A song that I, I would describe as analysis proof. <laughs> it might be. There's certainly analysis resistant. Yeah, because at best you're... I, We'll see what we do, but I'm like, are you like, why is this before that? That's a thing you could say. <laughs> That's a thing. I think the thesis of that song is stuff's always been happening. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. It might be That's... a super short episode, yeah, except that... for one million lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's some story ahead of time that they're like, I don't know why that part of the show <laughs> i don't okay. know why find another uh top 10 hit with the word thalidomide in it oh yeah i uh i'll try yeah would you try i think our, our best bet is i'll have to write one and then uh have it okay. become a hit i'm looking for this is going to be a great rock block <laughs> the, the thalidomide song and the new version yeah, uh, I'm a sad futon man. <laughs> oh, that's a good new tomorrow's today parenthesis. Sad futon man. <laughs> I like I look. I would love to play that on Spotify with Alexa so that I could hear her sad say that tomorrow is today. Sad futon man. <laughs> <laughs> sad futon man would be just a good playlist name. And that any of you can do. Yeah, yeah. Any of you can do Sad Futon Man. You have six weeks. Yeah, there will be a lot of Randy Travis on my Sad Futon Man list. Uh, we just heard some Radiohead on the way home. I was like, oh, that's Sad Futon. And even before we even thought of it, you were like, man, if I were on a futon, that would be great to listen to. <laughs> you know, those fuckers have finally come around to uh, Creep. Because they were one of those bands that are like, didn't want to play their hit. Right. And they were very big dicks about it. Uh, that seems right. Yeah. And now they're like, oh, you know what? Maybe it was kind of cool to make a little money. It's probably <laughs> cool. To, I like making a little bit of money. It was kind of nice. Well, once you get to uh, that age where you're paying for a lot of prescriptions. Yeah. Yeah. And you're one, hit. yeah. You're wondering where can I sleep comfortably until the end? I better make a little bit of money. Mm -hmm. I do not have to worry about that because nice. I realized that if at some point I end up in an old folks' home or something like that, some cheap old folks' home, I'm gonna be the guy that likes it. <laughs> That's an excellent decision to make. 
I know I will because a lot of the kind of the food that I like is <laughs> trouble free food. I like trouble free food. Mm-hmm. I, I enjoy fancy food. Don't get me wrong. I do, but there ain't nothing wrong. I'm like, oh, so we're having a stew? That's great. I like a stew. Great. Have a stew, watch some TV. I don't like being. Oh, there's. A, hey, they have a little bit of ice cream today. That's nice. Cool. I didn't expect that. <laughs> you like puzzles? I like puzzles. Absolutely. I like. I like not getting calls from friends and relatives. <laughs> Perfect. I love that. Yeah. I was like, oh, it's great today. You know who didn't call? Lots of people. It was great. Great. It was so peaceful. <laughs> All right. So, guys, listen. Until next week, I probably won't call you.